Thank you very much. Um, hope the mic. I hope the mic is working loud and clear. Um, there's a lot of energy for a Saturday morning. I think Saturday festivals <laughs> are the way to go. Um, so yeah, I've been controller of BBC Sounds for uh, three months. Um, I was going to share some initial insights, bit of vision for sounds. Uh, also, I've literally just flown in from the States where I spent a week meeting everybody in the podcast industry in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And uh, I want to share some of the insights from that trip because uh, very much the British story flows directly through from the American story. And um, there's an awful lot to be excited about, not least um, some headlines around money. Uh, and uh, podcasting is the fastest growing bit of advertising in the States right now. Uh, and the podcasting industry has just, just gone over the one billion pound mark for the first time. So this industry that was fledgling and innovative and exciting is um, starting to make some people a lot of money. And it's, uh, it's, it's getting quite interesting. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that too. Uh, are you my clicker? You can go straight to the second slide then, off we go. Right, this is what BBC Sounds is about. Now we are privileged in this country to have a bit more than America, I guess, a uh, wave of interest in live radio. So what have we got that if you like some of the um, big new tech entrants haven't got is big, huge radio stations that underpin our industry. 70% of our listening on Sounds is to our live channels. Sounds is not just about podcasts and on-demand music, it absolutely is to protect the future of our big live BBC radio stations. So what we are going to be doing is thinking about what that live experience is like to the next level, so that when Glastonbury was on last summer, there was a Glastonbury channel, uh, and we're gonna look at new ways alongside our existing channels of what a live radio experience is be. But live radio is absolutely part of what BBC Sounds is about. But as we know, speech is fast growing, on-demand speech is fast growing, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it's going to keep uh, growing even faster. Um, and obviously we know how strong Spotify are and others are in the music streaming space, but we believe there's a role for the BBC to play in our amazing range of specialist presenters. Uh, we should aspire to be world-class curators in the on-demand space for music, and that's what you're gonna see more from us over the next year or two. So live radio, feast of on-demand speech, and a really turbocharged on-demand music offer. Um, three words that we talk about in our team at Sounds. What's interesting going from a, and there were some eyebrows raised when I left a major linear job in terms of running Five Live to run a kind of home of digital. Um, some people wondering whether it was, a, what, what kind of step was it? You know, well, for me, it's, uh, it's uh, bringing together everything, our on-demand speech as we talk about and trying to enhance our, our live radio. Why is it so interesting for me in this job? I guess the, one of the fascinating things about sounds will be, over the next year, the more you use this product, the better the experience will be. Because the more that we, you'll be signed in users, we get to know what you like, and we'll offer up more content that you'll be able to discover. What the BBC sh job should be is to offer up programming that you perhaps otherwise wouldn't have thought of listening. You discover podcasts, you discover live speech that you otherwise wouldn't have done. So very much making it a relevant experience um, you'll, you'll hear a lot of talk in the industry, Spotify included in this conversation, how do we build habit? How do we build weekly habit, daily habit? You know, so podcasting shouldn't just be about those six part box sets, but what's the thing that brings you in every week? We would totally transform the number of performance now of sounds if we could transform fortnightly users into weekly, weekly into twice a week, twice a week into daily. So we're talking a lot about frequency. And one of our big advances, as I said, is one of the reasons why our numbers turbocharged for sounds in the summer was the Ashes Cricket, the World Cup Cricket, Glastonbury, Live Lounge Radio 1. Uh, we're absolutely thinking of um, live radio at the heart of this offer. So, next slide. Um, you know this already, audience is changing, on-demand speech is growing, on-demand music is growing. Let me talk more about that now in the next slide. So, um, yeah, mobile, mobile listening is increasing. Um, what's fascinating for someone who ran a speech radio station is 46% of the 7 million people a week who listen to podcasts are under 35. It's quite a young business, and uh, that should be quite exciting for those of us who are trying to reinvigorate a kind of, not just speech radio story, but radio story. Let me tell you more about Sam's uh, current performance. So we were, we're doing okay at the moment. We we had 1.3 million weekly users in June. We've doubled that in three months. 
and, uh, and we're going to grow. We're really going to grow it. And, and um, it's going to take some effort to grow it. It's going to take some real creativity to grow it. It's going to take all of those aspects I talked about, the podcasts we offer, um, the improved range of live we offer, the on-demand music we offer. But we um, think it's very important the BBC should have a strong digital home. We don't think we should be reliant on uh, big new tech entrants to dominate that space. We think it's important that the BBC has a strong digital presence. Let me talk a bit more about how that success. So um, podcasts are absolutely at the, uh, one of the reasons. Live radio and podcasts have driven the number of performance in the last, uh, in the last uh, three months. Obviously, we've done something the BBC doesn't do very easily or often. We've switched something off. Those of you who work from the BBC know often we don't close things down very well or very often. We closed down iPlayer Radio, which was brilliant for the last few years, but it was based only on live radio. And you all know, and it's why you're here, there's a converging world of live and on-demand speech. That's what BBC Sounds is about. And you can tell we've done a lot of work on the imagery, which is, uh, you know, from some of you will know lots about this and will really think about this, but what your podcasts look like. Um, you know, if you're going to get people to press a button, they've got to look right, they've got to kind of say what they are on the tin from the imagery. So we spent a lot of time and money uh, in the same way a lot of the American companies like Gimlet, et cetera, have done. Uh, often you turbocharge the success by looking at the imagery of uh, what you present to the audience. The marketing and imagery is, is keen, has is, is helped drive our story. Next one. Um, we, uh, interestingly, for those of you who want to know how we commission, so obviously... There are commissioners for every radio network, but on top of that, and we put some information out to uh, many of you last week who were on the suppliers list, we have four commissioners that effectively commission content for sounds first that may also go on the radio networks, but they are four areas of commission. I have Jason Phipps in London, who um, essentially is the front end of the innovation of podcasts, looking for things like under 25 drama, um, Jason commissioned Crypto Queen, which is doing great business right now, both in the UK and doing really well in America. Uh, Fashion Fix, Jacob Hawley on drugs, just some of the interesting new things coming out of Jason's area. Richard Maddock in Salford, commissions for Five Live, but also is one of the devolved commissioners for Sounds. Uh, in his stable, Peter Crouch, End of Days, uh, Paradise, which uh, Dan uh, sat at the front as the creator and narrator of one of the great storytelling successes coming out of Salford. Uh, you, Me and the Big C, many of you will know about the kind of uh, range of stuff, a mixture of kind of woke issues, storytelling and sports, sports entertainment coming out of Salford. Uh, we have Louise Cattenhorn from Radio 1, who also is one of the sales commissioners. In her slate would be Gemma Collins, the Obsessed with Strand, kind of programs like that, a bit more popular culture. And we also have Rianne Roberts, who sits in Radio 4, who's the fourth element of our commissioning team. And from her stable has come recently Forest 404, Evil Genius, You're Dead to Me, just some of the titles coming from her. So there was more information we put out last week, but those essentially are the four commissioners, either in London or Salford. And um, we can send a copy of this round, but this was something we put out last week, just giving you an indication of some of the commissioning rounds coming out over the next few months. Feel free to take a picture of it, but we can circulate this slide anyway to you. But for those of you on that suppliers list, you'll have had this information last week. They just give you some of the flavor of, um, of, the, of the things that we're looking for going forward. So there is a pot of a few million pounds in addition to the pot the commissioners have in the radio networks because we're serious about driving forward innovation in something that is only going to grow really quickly. Um, so I'm going to talk to you now about... Um, you can put my general slide on back at the top if you really want to be clever. And I'll talk to you about America now. So in America, I met up with Gimlet, Acast, Pocketcast, American Public Media, Slate, Endeavor, NPR, Pushkin, everybody in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Um, it's an over, over a one billion pound industry for the first time, okay? And there is a frenzy like I've never known before in New York right now, which is where a lot of it's driven from in America, for what next? So I'm literally sat with Wall Street Journal, who introduced the journal, which is their sort of drive time equivalent to New York Daily. Pretty good. Uh, it's actually made by Gimlet. Um, they're ready to do about six other titles, but for them it's about how do they scale up fast enough to do it. In terms of the money and advertisers being there for them to do more titles, it's there. And so you've got this frenzy of activity from the companies out there about the what next. Uh, why? Well, you all know of Spotify's very stated ambitions to be more than just music and to be a massive audio platform. And they signal their intent by buying Gimlet, probably the biggest, most successful 
um, and for me, one of the most impressive American companies. That acquisition of those companies puts a, a real statement of intent. There's Luminary with their own um, venture capitalist investment in pods over there. What are Apple going to do off the back of that? Uh, and then the ad revenue is increasing. You can see why there's this frenzy of behavior. What does that mean here? Well, our market very kind of follows the US trend. You'll see from our own BBC kind of commissioning, there's a pot of money there that, again, will, will trigger another wave of activity. Uh, it's, as I said, very much a global industry. And those of you who deal with corporate clients will know everybody wants to make a podcast. Everyone's like, oh, it's the thing. Our company needs that. So it, it feels quite lively right now. Eight million listeners a week in the UK. Prediction from me, it's 10 million next year. It's 12 million within two years. It's probably double within four or five years. It is, um, and why? Two reasons for me. One is that younger audience end of it where you're going to have people capturing two or three hours a week of speech through certain brands that they love, but it's just going to go more mainstream. People who currently listen to, whether it be Radio 2 or 5 Live or 4 or whatever, are in the same way, sort of Facebook video is a 20-somethings thing, and then you see the average age of that increase, increase, behaviours go up the ages, it'll just become more mainstream. So it feels like, you know, while a lot of our commissioning budget focus is specifically on the younger end, because we have existing commissioners that commission, if you like, for more mainstream audiences anyway, don't think it's just about a younger audience. It really isn't. It's just going to go more mainstream as an, injury, as an industry. So if you think the fact that my conservative prediction is 2 million more um, podcast consumers in the UK in the next 12 to 18 months, you kind of think it's quite a lively, interesting business. So um, I think, honestly, I think the creative bar required in the UK, because we have a Five Live, an LBC, and a Radio 4, needs to be even higher than America. I think the sort of audience, exp the audience kind of need to hit that button and press something is probably even more challenging than the American market. So I think creativity is key. And I think, I always say to my teams, Podcasting in its current guise is like five, six years old. Imagine if live TV, live radio was five or six years old. I don't think we've scratched the surface at innovation. I, think we don't, I don't think we've scratched the surface at the type of formats, uh, durations, storytelling, who you partner with uh, is interesting. And obviously, cross-media in terms of Brexit cast is now a TV show. Uh, and Indy has um, bought the first rights on one of our storytelling things at Five Live in terms of might it one day be an eight-part hit for BBC One, you have every single film uh, writer, uh, huge TV drama commissioners listening to every storytelling podcast. It's, a, again, a frenzy of interest in the kind of rich storytelling coming out of, a, of the podcast space. Uh, my best advice is I was interested in America in... If I was... My one bit of feedback which I found interesting was everybody seems to want to do everything, and I my best advice would be, what is your hook going to be? Because there are companies crying out, if you're going to be the best at storytelling or working with stars or shorter format podcasts, what is the thing you're going to be famous for? My, my, the interesting thing in America is Spotify acquiring two or three of the biggest companies kind of leads a vacuum where loads of other companies are fighting for space over there. All are talking about maybe doing drama, maybe doing documentaries. I was really struck by the fact very few were really focused on why they're going to win. And it kind of strikes me, so many people are going to want to make pods over there and over here. Um, if they know that you're one of the best two or three companies in one particular genre, I just think it takes you right to the top of the list of opportunities with commissioners. So, you know, how does, commission, how does commissioning and making things happen? There's obviously commissioning rounds from the BBC, but as you know, there's, there's the Spotify interest now in the UK. Uh, there's companies like something else who, rather than rely on commissions, are now uh, making and distributing their own content because they do their own analysis that the adverts that they can make uh, allow them to do things profitably. So sometimes it doesn't even rely on a commissioning uh, model anymore. So that's how things have changed. But my advice, I think, is what are you going to be expert in? Because I came back from America and I could list quite a lot of the companies. I thought, I'm not quite sure what you're expert in. And that's quite an interesting insight from over there. So that's kind of me done. Gives you a flavor of sounds, which... Um, I think we're starting to scratch the surface of something really exciting. I think the UK needs it. Um, I'm sure you'll ask me loads of tricky questions about what next for sounds, and you're welcome to do that. That's fine. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, there's quite a lot in there. You answered a load of the questions I sent you last night. That's fine. That's fine. I probably <laughs> saw the questions. I thought I'll okay. answer them in advance. Okay, we... you ready? Yeah, go on. So, so I'm going to describe the podcasting space at the moment as a bit of a jostle. So up until this point, 
it's been kind of DIY podcasters, broadcasters kind of going, oh, what's going on over here? And now we're all in. We're All of us are all in, right? So what do you think that the broadcast side, if you like, has learnt from the people who aren't broadcasters? Um, Different to what was on the email last night. Um, I think it's changing the face of... It's, if you think, if I was to give my Five Live example, which obviously yeah. is the most relevant for me over the last two years, is the stuff that storytellers like Dan have made and the sports entertainment stuff like Crouch, you'll hear that now in the live station. Yeah. You'll hear, you know, that like previously, for example, investigative journalism would have been a one hour show where you put your headline at the top, whereas Crypto Queen is a roller coaster ride where you don't know the story to the end. And, and so there's loads of things around storytelling, around tone of, of content which I think is reshaping. You think about a producer world that's been quite set in a framework, you know, very good at what they do, but almost needing to be jostled at, at pace to, to, to sort of change with the audience expectations. So I would say it's been pretty game changing. And so flip side, as a broadcaster, listening to podcasts that are being made DIY, if you like, that's kind of me just being quite you know, basic with my splitting it up. But yeah. when you're listening... A bit harsh on this, like making DIY parts. No, I mean, there's, there's amazing <laughs> podcasts. Um, but it's just kind of, to, just for ease. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 I manage it. What, do you, what sort of things are you hearing in podcasts that you think, actually, from the broadcast side, that you could do with doing a little bit of this? Um, that's a good question. I, I think... Um, I, I think... It's becoming a professional industry, is what I'd say, first of all. You talked about that, jokingly, that DIY term. Yeah. What I would say about that is, you look about the, the imagery that we're having to put on our stuff now. You look at the way, listen, listen to an episode that Gimlet did from their startup podcast on the episode where Spotify are about to buy them. And listen to Gimlet talking about how they are professionalized in that year and a half. They are brilliant at podcasts, but they weren't a successful company. And they had to professionalize themselves on the imagery, the marketing, how they cross promote between podcasts. So one comment there would be around how we, how we professionalize to the next level. But what have I learned under the skin of that? Probably a tone of informality, of innovation, where there's something beautiful, isn't there, about a podcast where a creator can literally, without a commissioning process, beautifully put something to air. And I think there's a rawness of that, which is quite captivating. That's probably, that would be my thing, actually. Rather thinking outside a hierarchy level, how can that creativity flow? And I think it's really interesting. So something like Forest 404. I mean, I know we're probably people in the room who make podcasts who are kind of going, right, we've got to be consistent. We've got to do one thing, every you know, and all of that. Uh, and then Forest 404 comes out, and it's three episodes per week, and it's in the same channel. Yeah. And I think BBC, that's kind of your responsibility, isn't it, to kind of push those boundaries a bit? Yeah, um, and the responsibility of all of us to not get trapped by what, it, what the market currently is. I mean, let's face it, if we were to f totally follow the American market, we'd all have self-help motivation podcasts because they're the to. top 200, right? <laughs> yeah, well, of course. One. Well, yeah, 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 but that's, we see you, Mine's but you've, you've cornered the UK market. We don't, need to, we don't need to follow that anymore. But you know what I mean? What I mean is we have to, we have to keep thinking of, you know, we've... We, we had a wave of, we have a wave, uh, uh, my criticism perhaps of even our end is, have we commissioned for habit? Have we, have we, have we commissioned for wonderful storytelling that gives us hooks? And of course we still want that, but have we really commissioned to have people coming in every week? Probably not enough. So all the time we just got to think about what those formats are, I think. So in the commissioning process, what stands out to you? Um... That's, that's one right. of those, how long's a piece of string kind of question. It, a bit, but let's look. My job is to make sure that the UK has global hits. If I was to put one thing on my machine, would be that uh, Peter Crouch gets over half a million per episode. Right now, that is serious. That's kind of serious numbers. You know, Crypto Queen in the States, I think, is doing forty, fifty thousand episode. Has everyone listened? To right, that's fine, right? But yeah. forty, fifty thousand episode is not the UK leading the American way, is it? So we've got to think a little bit bigger. And so I think what, we, what I need to do a little bit on a global level is suss out a bit more globally how we can commission for that space rather than just for the UK. So that would be one thing I need to think about. I think the, the, audience, the, the audience imperative to listen to something, there's so much choice, right, that, that things have to stand out for some reason. Either the talent you bring is amazing, the storytelling is so compelling, the format is so original. There is a, there is a creativity bar that's pretty high. You know, you can imagine the number of ideas we get in, mm -hmm. and it's tricky, right? There's still a lot of them that feel quite linear, that still feel a little bit like, well, isn't that just a one-off for Radio 4 that you've just reversed into a, a four-part thing? 
I'm like, that isn't going to change the game. So, look, our bar on it can be, can be pretty brutal, I guess, but we're, I'm looking, I am looking for voices that are, that, that are going to feel fresh and original. But I think we all know that George the Poet, for example, would be, and Crouch, would be voices that, that shape a British market. And then wouldn't it be great to see what the wave of talent is over the next two years that will do that? And George the Poet's a good example, because that wasn't a BBC Sounds or BBC podcast, Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. And you've brought that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that... Is that is can anyone do that? Could anyone kind of go? I've got this great podcast here. So uh, we've uh, I'm not giving you a big news line here because the DG talked about it uh, a couple of months ago. But we want to be an aggregator of podcasts. We we would aim by uh, at some point next year. W we want to be the best aggregator in the UK of podcasts. We want to get to a place where you can make a podcast if you like, self-certify that it's decent editorial, whatever, and then be on sounds. That's our aspiration, is to give you an offer of the best global podcast and allow British podcast makers to be on this platform. Our first stage is we've got to aggregate our own stuff really well, right, and, 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 and get the product to the next level. But we absolutely believe a best of British offer should be, should be inherent to a, to a kind of sounds remit. So watch this space on this one. As I said, it's not, it's not new. Tony's talked about that already. But yeah, our aim is a creator, an enabler. So you're right, George the Poet didn't start with us, but in quite a profound way, he said he needs the institution of the BBC to take his story to the next level. And it was quite a moving thing that he said to us when, and you kind of think he then has to now be really authentic even though he's with the BBC, yeah. and I think we can allow him to do that. So that's quite an exciting. Yeah, that's interesting, because those editorial guidelines, I guess, Sounds has to respond to those, or? It, it does, but, you know, you, you've heard our podcast. There's plenty of room for... There is there's plenty, plenty of room to push the boundaries, right? Yeah, can I just do a show of hands, and I know he's the boss, but does who listens to BBC podcasts? Some, good start, good start. I like that you kind of went, am I going to put my hand up? <laughs> So that's really good, isn't it? And there was a great stat that came out on Pod News yesterday about, it's quite complicated, so bear with me. The Pocket, the Pocket Cast's yeah. top 100 UK subscribed podcasts, 38% yeah. of them are British, made, and half of those are the BBC. So that's, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. But they're clearly, that means that 60% of them aren't even British made, right? Correct. I, I, I think, uh, I believe, I believe, because we've got to hit a creative bar that I believe is even higher than America, yeah. I believe the opportunity is there for us to really be better globally. I really believe that. I think that we've just started to see something in the last year or two, so not just BBC podcasts, by the way. Absolutely, we're learning from loads of things from around the room, from, you know, from our rivals. We'll also benefit from the new money that the likes of Spotify and Luminary are putting in. You know, it makes it more exciting. It's going to grow. You know, it's like, you know, it's like radio stations growing together, isn't it? The industry needs to grow together. You, you think of the opportunities if this is 12 million a week, not 7 million a week, and you think that's quite exciting. Yeah, definitely. Okay, final question then. So if I, um, if I am in this room and I am just making a podcast and I'm thinking I'm not involved with any suppliers list or anything like that, yeah. how do I get my idea onto BBC Sounds? Well, there's different things on that. I mean, I think um, obviously if you're on a suppliers list, there's access to a machine um, commissioning rounds. If you're not, you can kind of publish your own and, and, and make it great. Um, what, my commissioners are always able to listen to an idea, but I think you have to be... My, my best advice is, if you, are, if you are out there on your own, who could you partner up with so that, so that you feel a little bit more professional than that to, to, to people like me? Like, if you're an expert in storytelling and you team up with another expert in storytelling and a little group of you become something, I think that would, that, that would be what I would do if I'm sat there in a, in, in a world that's going to become very professional. And if you believe you want to do something in it, that's what that's what I would do. It's not there's no there's not a no bar entry to getting an idea there. But obviously, you know you'll 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 be up against suppliers that will look at that financial opportunity and will be professionalising all of the time in this space. Yeah. So I think that there's there's yeah there has to be realism of that, and you have to therefore work out you know. But but, but I was I was interested in America where. Uh, it was exciting, but in, in terms of innovation, it felt like there was a lot of growth that we could do and they could do together. Cool. Well, okay. thank you very much. Have I asked everything? Has anyone got any one? I think I've got time for one question, if anyone wants to throw their hand in the air. Oh, yes, you. Can you shout? <laughs> run, 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 run. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, Hi, yeah. Clayton Coke um, from The Cash Flow Show. You've got lots and lots of people vying for this space, and it reminds me, and since we're in Manchester, it reminds me of the era of punk rock. 
where you've got everybody doing their DIY, DIY fanzines or whatever the case may be, and that's what it feels like to me. I just get the impression that you seem quite guarded when you come out and say that people have to necessarily uh, partner up or do something alone. What if you feel that you've got a podcast and it's professional by most people's standards yep. and you've got something that you know could scale up? What is it about walking up to you and say, hey, I'm Clayton, this is my podcast? Yeah, uh, absolutely right. There's just a thousand of you doing it every week. That, I, that, that's just the, the, the maths, you know. That's, that's the business we're in, right? Absolutely. There's nothing more exciting to me than you walking up and me thinking that's a hit for us or that's going to, you know, and, you know, and we're the BBC. It's not just, you know, you, me and the big C was more than about numbers, right? It was about doing something in the UK that was a force for good in this country. Oh, cool. So absolutely, you know, I would love nothing more than that. I'm just being realistic and, and about, about a business where I would expect a funnel of 30 or 40 big hits going into a world of like hobbyist stuff underneath. And I guess it's just going to get more challenging. It's just going to get more challenging. But there is nothing more satisfying, believe me, than an individual with a product that, you know, maybe you publish yourself and put out there and we've got wind of, right, that, that we can then be an enabler of to the next level. George Poet is an amazing example of how we can hopefully transform. You know, half of America haven't really heard of him. And it's quite satisfying to me to be sat with Gimlet's bosses to say you really need to listen to the Grenfell Tower episode of George Poet Series 1 to hear an innovation that you've not even got in America right now. Yeah, it's so, awesome, that. But I think you're absolutely right to go down the aggregation road, because that's the challenge we've found, is, like, I can't listen to everything I want to listen on that. I can keep switching between apps. Yeah. So if you're aggregating through all of the content, then there is a chance for our podcast to really go on against... Uh, and and yeah. that's what I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying here today is, you know, um, it's, that, that's the point, is, is you could make something, okay, and you can... Just fill a form in in a year's time to have your product on there, right? Now, what you better be good at form filling. <laughs> it, won't, it won't be. It won't be a complicated form. But that's you know. I mean. I mean. But 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 look. This. But this. This industry of where every podcast on an RSS feed is going to be everywhere. It's already beginning to change, right? So so so. I do think there's an opportunity for us in the UK. To, to be a kind of force for good UK aggregator. And you're right, look, one of the things now is you can, it's a great way to experience BBC podcast mix between your live radio, but if you want to go from podcast to, you know, Freakonomics or whatever else, you're on New York, time, New York Daily that you're enjoying somewhere else, but that's the sort of thing that we will bring to you um, in time. I guess, look, we've, we've got to improve the product, get to the right place, aggregate the 80,000 hours a week of stuff we've already got, you know, in the first instance. But yeah, that I think will be, Hopefully, the motivating thing for this industry is that Sound will absolutely want to showcase the best of the best of stuff coming from all over the UK. What's your favourite podcast? Um, um, right, I would say favourite three episodes right now. Listen to Gimlet. Gimlet startup about Spotify is wonderful if you're in the podcast industry just to listen to. George the Poet, Grenfell Tower. Uh, I think episode three, series one, is probably the most creative thing I've ever heard in this space. Um, what else? Uh, I enjoy the American 20-minute daily, New York dailies, Wall Street Journal type stuff. Uh, Crypto Queen, probably the yeah. favorite current sort of roller coaster ride, emerging story. Um, does that give you a flavor? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody, John O'Wall. Thank you very much. Thank you. From BBC Sounds. Thank you. Take care.